So with it being the 20th anniversary of hybrid theory this year, I, I know it was actually in October, but we're just kind of doing kind of a year-end wrap-up of the whole thing because the band's been doing stuff all year. So um, just wanted to talk to you because I know you played with them for about a year or so before the album came out. So just had a few questions. Yeah, it was about, that. about nine or ten months, something like that. Okay. Um, so how did you first hear about the band? Because they weren't exactly like a big deal at the time that you got on board with them. <laughs> no, they uh, they had a publishing deal with Zomba Music. Okay. Um, and my friend Ariana worked uh, as uh, she was a PA for uh, Jeff Blue, who was working at Zomba Music, who basically got the band their publishing deal and subsequently moved to Warner Brothers and got them signed to Warner Brothers. Sure. Um, and so uh, she told me, like, I don't know if you'd be interested, but uh, this band is probably going to be signed. Sure. And um, so if you want to do it, it's not really your your thing, like your style, but it's, you know, it's a gig. And I was like, well, you know, I'll check it out. And, sure. Uh, so that's basically how it happened. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, I just I actually read Jeff's book that he just put out, and I remember an Ariana being mentioned as one of the people he worked with, so she's actually in there. <laughs> I don't know, have you read his book yet? No, I haven't. Okay. I have not. Cool, yeah, you get mentioned in there a couple times. <laughs> um, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what was your audition process like? Did you just kind of, I, I can't imagine there were a lot of people really gunning for that spot at the time. No, there was no one else. Okay, so it was pretty it, much it, just, it, hey, the yeah, old... In fact, I, I, I had to ask them, like, so do I have the gig or not? Because I was just basically, we were auditioning singer. Sure. Like, once I, I learned the, the, the few songs that they had already, I, uh, I was just basically playing the bass on their song. Sure. And, um, and we were auditioning singers, and I was like... So, am I your bass player? And they're like, yeah, totally. And I'm so, like, okay. <laughs> so, so it was that yeah. informal? <laughs> it was that informal, yeah, uh, totally. Okay, that's actually the next thing I was going to ask, because I, this, the whole timeline of this has always been a little unclear, because like, they were auditioning bass players and singers at almost the <clears> same <throat> time. So, you were there before Chester got there? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the one who told them to hire Chester. Really? They didn't want to hire him. Yeah. There's, um... Yes, in Jeff's book, I guess there was something about, like, he th he came in and auditioned, and they didn't want to commit to it, and, like, they were still rehearsing with him while also auditioning other singers. Um, yeah, yeah, there were, yeah, there were, there were a couple of, of other singers that they were auditioning, and I was like, okay, you bastards need to hire Chester because this is... Like this dude can sing. He's you know, sure. and they're like, yeah, but you know, he's got this like greasy, weird, curly hairdo, and like he doesn't know how to dress. I'm like, you can fix those things. <laughs> he really didn't you can't fit in. Fix his like, voice. Yeah, yeah. You um, can't fix his voice. His voice is good. He's a solid, solid thing. Sure. And um. And so they were like, okay, well, we're hired. hired and then I was like, well, so am I in the band as well? <laughs> so they pretty much solidified that lineup, like, simultaneously then? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It was right around the same time. Okay. I, and I've got that as roughly, like, spring of 99, maybe, like, well, March would have been when Chester did his audition tape because his birthday. So probably, yeah, like, April. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 99, and then, yeah. Yeah, and then they they fired me in uh, I think it was October, September of October of two thousand, and then signed with Warner Brothers in, like the next month. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, that's Which, what I that's what I got yeah, here was October. That kind of sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'd done all this work with them, and then they're like, yeah, no. So yeah, what I've got here is that right around the same time they were talking about signing the deal with Warner was when. They parted ways with you? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you weren't in on, like, the whole, um, the label deal or anything where you, you were gone oh, by yeah, then? yeah, no, I was. I, I, I did all of the 
showcases and everything with them uh, leading up to that. Sure. Yeah. I'll... I just uh, didn't get a, a, a you know a line on the contract with my name on it. You didn't get to sign the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's basically what it boils down to. Okay. Yeah. So. um Obviously, like, were you there that first day that Chester walked in and, like, met everybody? Yeah. Okay. So was your impression of him pretty much, like, the same as, like, well, th- this guy doesn't match his voice, like, at all? <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't uh, you know, because I'm a weird-ass individual myself. Sure. So, <laughs> um, you know, yeah, he came in wearing, like, a shiny shirt, and his hair was all, like, you know, twisted into little ringlets and shit and, and, you know and uh, he came in and he just just blew like he just went crazy like and I was like and they were like yeah I don't know he doesn't really seem to fit in I'm like this motherfucker can sing <laughs> yeah it, it's crazy that like they wouldn't have been so sure of him at, at the time but like I know they were also like just coming off of a whole bad thing with their last showcase with their first singer like went really bad. Yeah. So yeah, their first singer couldn't sing at all. He was terrible. Yeah, and it, it was kind of one of those awkward things where like he was fr- their friend, but he couldn't cut it. Right. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um. And then and then their bass player went to, to you know start a Christian rock band, and you know and it's like. What? And then he people came back right around. Do. What do you people want to do? You know, like I, that's the way. That was basically my attitude coming mm-hmm. into. Like, what do you want to do? <laughs> do you want this band to succeed? Because right. you're going to have to make some sacrifices, and you're going to have to realize that just because you went to high school together doesn't mean that that you're, you know, going to have uh, everybody in the band anymore. Because some of these people don't want to be in this band. In sure. a band that's, that's commercially successful, and so you know, and that was the thing, and, and you know, and then when Chester came in, I went, "Oh, he hired Chester. He's awesome. He's got a great voice." Yeah. You know, and they were reluctant, and I was like, "What the hell is the matter with?" And that's probably part of the reason that I got fired. You know? Really? <laughs> is, is that I, I, you know, I. I just laid it on the line for him. I was like, no, seriously. So you were kind of the the odd man out as far as like, hey. That's, and, yeah, that's okay. the best way to put it. Yeah, I was sure. the odd man out. All right. And then what exactly led to you being fired, I guess? I have no idea. They, they never gave me a reason. They just told you one day, hey, we're... We don't want to work with you anymore. Huh. And I had the flu at the time. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they told me to come down to the studio uh, where we were rehearsing because it was important. We needed a, a band meeting. And I'd just gotten married, and I had the flu, and I was like, I really don't feel like doing it. Like, it's important. And I was like, okay, I'll come down. There. And they told me, you were huh. fired. <laughs> and I was like, you couldn't have done this over the phone. But... You know, you know like, he, it's not like it's that big a deal for me, really. These days, it's it's that meeting could have been an email. Back then, it was like that meeting could have been a phone call. Yeah, totally. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly the way yeah. that was. Yeah. It was it was really like it was really the wrong way to go about things, and and um, you know that that hurt my feelings because. It was like, you know, they didn't even care enough after, you know, nine or ten months of, of like, I mean, literally daily uh, working on a project with these people. Sure. You know, they, they don't even have the common courtesy to, to uh, I, I told them, I have the flu, I feel like ass right now. Sure. I really don't want to go anywhere. And like, you know, it's important. It's a band meeting. We have to do it. And I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that, um, and then the fact that um, they released the uh, the EP that we made, uh, having erased all of the music that I had 
<laughs> so, so you're talking the the that, that's cool. The hybrid theory EP. You know the 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 EP that they released. Yeah, with the baby on the cover. I don't. I don't. Yeah. No, I only listen to the music. Um, I don't remember what it looked like, but yeah, they they re-recorded all of the bass parts, so they didn't have to pay me any royalties, and and it's much more pedestrian than uh, it should have been. Sure. Um, in my opinion, because the, the the things that I played on it were actually rather melodic and and uh, harmonic. Sure. And, um. And they just went, nah, nah, we're just going to uh, re-record it. And I think Brad is the one who uh, who re-recorded all my bass parts. Sure. So yeah, they didn't I, have to pay me anything. Yeah, I've got... And they didn't. And, and, and I was like, you know, that hurts more than anything else, you know? I don't even care, really. I mean, it'd be nice to have a bit of royalties from the, the Lincoln Park, you know, empire. Right. But, but you didn't get any cut of the songwriting or anything. Like, you know, I I had some really good ideas on that. You know, mm. yeah. And uh, and so that's really what what it boils down to is that I just you know I was like, okay, fine, you're firing me. Doesn't gotcha. matter. Yeah. So but if you're gonna put out, you know, music that I worked on, I I mean I helped write that music. Right. And you're not even going to use the tracks that I laid down. Yeah. You know, or give me any credit for it. It's mm-hmm. like, that's, that's not cool at all. Yeah, I I even noticed, like, because they reissued that EP the first year of their fan club, like, a couple years later, and your name's not in it. I think your name's in the booklet, like, on the original one, but there's only, like, so many copies of that. Mm-hmm. And... It sounds like like you're not actually even playing on it. They just stuck your name in there, just to, you know, say yeah, no, whatever. Yeah, that's not uh, because I listened to it and I was like, that's not me playing the bass. Sure. <laughs> like, it's obvious. <laughs> it's completely, and the bass is just buried in there. You know, the bass parts are just buried, and because they're just like, you know, root note, just just root notes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, that's the bass part? I was like, no. <laughs> like, the shit that I was doing was like, boom. Sure. You know? Yeah. I was like, making it interesting and, yeah. and, and giving it some life and some substance. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, the, it, 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 no, that's not what we want, apparently. So, and plus, if you use Kyle's bass parts then you have to pay him royalties and it's like mm. <laughs> you know like I said I don't I don't even care about the royalties and the fact that they did that sure you, you know to me creatively because yeah. I was actually I was actually trying to you know create something with these guys so mm. yeah, that's I- the part that hurts so much yeah, I was going to say like a lot of the, there's a lot of the early demos floating around well, well a lot of them are on the box set now that just came out um and some of them have like a lot more of kind of a funky, I'd say like sort of a three eleven ish kind of influence on them. Uh-huh. And um, there's could have been the song on the box set that's got the slap bass solo at the end. I know that was you. Oh really? Yeah. That got in there. Yep. Did, did you want to get credit for it? <laughs> yeah, they um, yeah, on the uh, I got it right here. The whole demo CD, it says additional bass by Kyle Christner. <laughs> and it's misspelled, right? Like, there's an extra E in there, isn't there? Um, is there? No, there isn't. Oh, they got it right. They got, they got it right. Jeff's book had it wrong. Yeah, the, yeah, because it's just uh, T-N-E-R, not T-E-N-E-R. Okay. I was actually going to ask you about that because I've seen it both ways, so... Make sure I got that right here. Um, I was pretty sure it was the was no e. So. Oh, so that yeah, that slap thing at the end, which was just a throwaway. I was gonna say that pretty much sounded like a one take and it's done kind kind of thing. 
Yeah, it totally was. It was just, <laughs> it, you know, it was like, just fire up the, the, the thing and I'll play the song. And then, yeah. And, and at the end, I was just like, I was just, it, it, I just thought that, that, that here's a great idea. I'll just do a, a slap bass solo thing at the end and just, <laughs> you know, ride it out and we can fade it out whenever, you know. Yeah, well, they didn't fade it out on the box set. They just kind of cut it at the end, like where you sort of just gave up and stopped. It, it just oh, played. Yeah, well, I, yeah, no, I had to. I was, yeah. I, I was like, you know, I had nowhere else to go. I was just like, kind of, kind Yeah, I, I play bass too, and you were doing like some double stop things and just kind of, okay, it sounded like, oh, I'm done. Just. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you were in the room. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's exactly what happened. It was like, you know, it was like, put it in the ink, 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 That's exactly how it goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um... Because <laughs> I knew that it was going to be faded out at that point, you know? Sure. Like, I'd already gone through all, all of the, like, you know, like, it, it should have just been faded out at that point, but... Yeah, when I heard the the uh, yeah, and when I heard the demo, it's not even on there. It's just like cut. Yeah, that was that was a song that we never knew existed until the box set came out. Like it was completely unknown, which is surprising that they still have songs that we don't know about from back then because there's so many demos already around. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it was a um, it was an interesting part of my life. It, you know, playing with those guys because it was, you know, uh, it was one of the first times that I'd been in rooms doing showcases, doing, you know, signing contracts and things, you know, mm-hmm. all of that, um, all of the business and of the music industry. Sure. Um, so I learned a lot, but um, by the same token, it was like, you know, I'm glad that I. I'm not or wasn't playing with them anymore. <laughs> you know, because just just because they it sounds like they kind of gave you a raw deal there. Yeah, yeah, and and, and you know I'm I'm a, a laid back, easygoing type of guy who likes to play like really weird nut job music. And <laughs> they wanted to play the most mainstream thing they could possibly do. You know. Yeah. And, and I was like, and in retrospect, I, I just went, yeah, no, this isn't really what I want to do. Sure. So why am I trying so hard? You know, and it yeah. was it was basically just because I, I wanted to do, uh, you know, help them succeed. Yeah. yeah. And they did, and they did well. Sure. So. What are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the nature of the industry, it, you know, it's like bands like Lincoln Park survive and they do well, and yeah. you know, bands like the ones that I've been in and have created uh, do well in bars and and have a, a local following, mm-hmm. and and I'm totally okay with that because that, that's really I'd rather make the music that I want to make and not make music for the masses you know sure yeah I get so, that you, you wouldn't get any of those music school kids to like <laughs> join a band that's that mainstream I don't think unless they wanted to do it for the money there's <laughs> yeah precisely that's, I mean that's really what it is that's what it boils down sure. to so yeah. you can make music for the people of America and Europe and whatever and, and it, you know and, and everybody can get into it or you can make music that's actually interesting and you really like it and a, a few thousand people will go oh that's awesome sure <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah. that's the, I'd rather be in the latter Mm-hmm. category that, you know because it's really that's what it is you know yeah and it, I, mean, 
I think even they, like, later in their career, because, like, they weren't as successful, but the music they did was more all over the map from, like, their third, fourth album onwards. And so I think they were trying to more walk that line of still being able to sell records, but doing not the same thing every single time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, and uh, yeah, honestly, the, I mean, some of the later stuff that I heard from Lincoln Park, I was like, hey, they're actually trying to branch out a little bit. Yeah. This is all right. I can deal with this, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, but the, like that first record, I was like, oh, God, this is just boring. It's just <laughs> absolutely boring. Yeah, it's, it's like every song is the, like four chords and <laughs> nothing going on. Yeah, I like There's nothing. That song is a total like nostalgia thing for me because I was like in high school when it came out, and um, I still you know it's on my Spotify and everything in my car. But it's like usually when one of the songs from that record comes up, I'm like, eh, I just skip it. I've, I've heard it enough times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. No, I understand that, and, and and I get. I mean, I get the nostalgia thing as well, especially for someone because obviously you're several years younger than I am. Because sure. I, was, I think I was 28 or 29 when I was in the band. So. Oh, so you uh, were a bit older than they were. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I thought that you were all kind of around the same age. No, no, no. Okay. I, I, I I'd already been around the block a couple of times. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, no, I think I was twenty. I think I was twenty-eight. Okay. Uh, when I was in the band, and um, or I just turned twenty-eight. So um, yeah, and they were all in their early twenties sure. at that point. Yeah. So uh, once again, another. I'm guessing part of my being fired is that I was older than them. You know. Sure. Yeah, maybe that played no. into it. They, they just wouldn't. I was the grandpa you. on the band. I, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I've never been told why I was fired. Hmm. They just said we don't want you in the band anymore. Okay. Well, you could have done this over the phone, but I'm sick as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, <laughs> so that so, was really irritating. Yeah. <laughs> that I had to come down to the studio because uh, I mean. The studio was, was literally that, like across town. Like, was that the studio on Hollywood and Vine? 20, 25, 20, 30 minutes yeah. just to get there. Was that like and, a uh, rehearsal studio they had on Hollywood and Vine? Yes. Okay. I, I was wondering if they were already in there or not, because there, there's some like old rehearsal video of them, but it's with the guy who played bass after you. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, it was yeah, it was Hollywood and Vine, as I recall, and yeah, and I lived in Silver Lake. So it was like L.A. traffic and having to drive yeah. across town to go there. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, like it, it was light outside when I left, and it was dark when I got there. <laughs> so that's uh, that's uh, the uh, the trek that I had yeah. to get fired. Yeah. So <laughs> so let's see. No, that's... <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'll pick up my gear tomorrow. I am too sick to, to load up my gear tonight. No, I'll, I'll, I'll just take care of it tomorrow. <laughs> so, w when they did that Hybrid Theory EP, um, I guess that would have come out shortly after you got fired, or maybe it was already out by then. I don't know. But... No, I think they. As, as far as I know, that it came out after the first record came out. Okay. Yeah, well, I yeah, they put it out as a fan club CD, and then there was like, yeah, I guess I, I, when I, I say it know, came I out, like really it, follow the band, sure, you know? yeah, like it wasn't in, I wouldn't say it was in stores or anything, but like they had copies of it. It was probably mostly stuff that they sent out to labels because they still weren't signed. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you remember recording? I mean, obviously your tracks got replaced, but I know that some of that was uh, they had Mudrock producing it. Do you remember working with the, with him? Oh yeah. Okay. Where where were you recording? Was that just at the rehearsal studio, or did you book time somewhere? Well, um, most of it we did in uh, in Shinoda's bedroom. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because he had uh, Pro Tools or or 
something. Yeah, I think it's Pro Tools on his computer in his bedroom. Okay. So we we would record. Or we would do the stuff um, in the studio, the the, the main tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and then you know because it's too expensive to do it to just do all the overdubs and everything. Right. Um, we would do all the overdubs in Shinoda's bedroom. Yeah, it it wasn't like the, the the final hybrid theory thing where you got four tracks of rhythm guitar on everything, and it's just you know as <laughs> fleshed out as it yeah. could possibly. No, be. no, no. It, it was <laughs> mainly just getting the drum tracks down. Yeah, there because was... uh, he lived in an apartment in Glendale, and so we couldn't really record drums in an apartment in Glendale. So I remember him. I remember him saying something get the like, drum they... tracks down, and then basically everything else would just go on top of them." I remember him saying something like they would sample the like Rob's hits from his drum kit and then pro, like program drums like so it's like his drum sounds but it's not actually him playing live because they couldn't like record in the apartment or whatever. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what. It, yeah. It, it, if, if if there were yeah weird punches or something like that, yeah. Okay. It would just be a sample of it. Yeah. So so a lot of those demos that are going around, I, I imagine it's probably a mix of you and Brad and whoever else, like just depending on time frame and s- some of the songs they were doing, I'd imagine they probably did them and they already had a bass track on them when they brought them in or, mm-hmm. okay. Well, yeah, cause I, I got to I mean, when I joined the band, well, when I auditioned for the band, um, they had, uh, it, they were called zero with an X mm-hmm. and, um, and I think Brad had done all the bass. No, no, I'm sorry. He hadn't. It was, um, would have been Dave. Was his yeah. Um, who had done all the bass tracks and they were, so it, it was, it was laid down. Um, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't terribly melodic, you know? Sure. In my opinion. Yeah. And that was what I tried to bring to the band, sure. is that, you know, I wanted to bring more melody to the band. And then when Chester came along, I was like, this motherfucker can sing, <laughs> you know? And obviously I can write a goddamn great bass line, so <laughs> you're, you're looking at, at, like, you know, taking this, this garage band to the next level because right. you got two people at least that can really you know just bring melody melody and harmony mm-hmm. to the the to the sound and and then they fired me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I was like okay yeah. and then they re-recorded my bass line to, to be like just you know one note Bass lines, and I'm like, with a, with a pick. What the hell is the matter <laughs> with you people? You know, and apparently that's what they wanted, or Warner Brothers wanted, or Jeff Blue wanted, or I don't sure. know. I, I have no idea because I had absolutely no contact with them whatsoever <laughs> after that. Like it, it, just, it just fell apart completely. <laughs> okay, Steve. and um, part of it was me feeling a little bit hurt. By it because I put so much time and energy into it, and but most of it was them just going, no, we, we just don't, we don't like him for yeah. some reason. I'm like, I, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fairly likable character. <laughs> you seem like it. <laughs> um, you mentioned Jeff Blue. I actually wanted to talk about him a minute because he's a very polarizing name to bring up with some people. <laughs> Um, there's some people like, oh, he discovered them, he was the one person who always believed in them. Uh, other people, it's like, no, he was kind of trying to control their songwriting and make them do things a certain way. Like, what what kind of relationship did you perceive that as being like? With Jet Blue? Yeah. Um... I'm... You don't want to throw anybody under the bus, that's fine. uh, I'm not a negative person. Okay. But quite honestly, I never liked Jeff Blue. Okay. 
I never liked him. Um, and I, I think we should probably leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He- his um like just based on some of the stuff I've heard about him like when I read his book it, it came across as a little bit less self indulgent than I was expecting but still like also like it seemed like he really wanted to take a lot of the credit so <laughs> um yeah but it, it, if that's as, as much as you want to leave it at that's totally well yeah I mean he already had a relationship with the band before I joined you yeah know? yeah he had um like seeing them I think like their first show and done like a a development deal with them or something yeah yeah and he, and he you know and he like I said before he, he said don't sign a contract with anybody else because I'm probably moving to Warner Brothers mm-hmm. and I'll get you guys signed to Warner Brothers yeah so it was like okay you know that was that, that was basically you know it as far as him, you know, in general, that's... Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff in in that book about, like, what you said with he was trying to bring them to the label and make it, like, contingent on him getting the job that they would sign the contract. Um, mm-hmm. And just the whole... Took it. He says you guys played something like... 44 showcases and got turned down every single time. I don't know if those were all with you, but... No, that sounds about right. <laughs> we played a shit ton of showcases. Yeah. Was that always at, like, your your studio? Like, you'd bring people in, or were, did you play shows? Like, at... No, no, most of them were at SIR. Okay. In Hollywood. Gotcha. He, he mentions um, SIR a couple times in there. Yeah, yeah, it... it and it was always to like eight people. <laughs> there, my favorite story in there is there was one I can't remember off the top of my head what executive this guy was, but the, he um, Chester got like really up in his face while he was performing and like accidentally spat on oh. him, and the guy yeah. just kind of walked out. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, he did. And he was just like, "Sorry, man, I kind of got carried away there." <laughs> Yeah, no, Chester used to do that. He would get, he would, you know, come off the stage and just, like, especially, uh, 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 you know, these showcases, he would get right in the person's face. Sure. And, um, and yeah, he did. He, he spat on <laughs> his record executive. <laughs> <laughs> And it was, and, uh, you know, and I'm back there playing bass, trying to not to laugh because it, you know, because you you couldn't stop Chester at, at that point. Right. And he got rolling like that. You you couldn't stop him. Yeah. It, it, it was just like, okay, motherfuckers, watch out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here you go, Chester. Yeah. <laughs> I I was I was fortunate enough to meet Chester a couple times and just like there's always this disconnect like just talking to him in person like what just the kind of quiet friendly unassuming guy he is and then like (laughs) for him to just get up in your face and be just like screaming at you was there's there's a lot of uh yin yang kind of thing going on there (laughs) yeah yeah definitely and that and that was part of the reason why i I told the rest of the fellas like i hear this motherfucker he's he's exactly what this band needs, you know, mm-hmm. he needs to to, to uh, get in everybody's face, literally, you know, mm-hmm. because you know the music is fine. It's it, it's not exactly in my vein, but I can do it, and um, but Chester it can make it visceral. He can make sure. it, you know something palpable that 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 people are going to go holy shit i just saw this man and and they were amazing yeah and the lead singer like almost spat in my face (laughs) 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 you know so um yeah it's it's They were like, oh, maybe. It really <laughs> looks like we do. Like, that's the thing that you can fix. Yes. Yeah. The easiest thing. 
Yeah, there's a whole bit in the book too where Chester was like, I guess, getting frustrated because he was from Phoenix and he was yeah. basically homeless while he was out there rehearsing with them. He's like, Are you going to hire me or not? Yeah, yeah, and and they were they were totally like, you know, on the fence about it. Mm-hmm. And he was hanging out in in Los Angeles, <laughs> and you know, his wife was back in Phoenix, and. And I was like, you guys need to make a decision because, you know, I'm, I'm the new fish. I'm, I'm not, you know, yeah. I, I don't have a say really yeah. in whether or not you're going to hire him, but it, I think you're stupid if you don't. <laughs> yeah. So like, were you like officially speaking a member of the band or were you kind of like a hired gun situation or... I was kind of a hired gun. Okay. Because I, I asked uh, that... Although, but although, you know, I like I said, you know, we recorded that EP and all of my bass tracks were very melodic and very, you know, sure. harmonic and, and I was trying to make something, uh, you know, more along the lines of like, a perfect circle or tool or yeah. uh, uh, even Pantera, you know, like sure. just heavy, but but just with a with solid it? groove to it. You yeah, know? yeah. The, the, That's where I was coming from. The song that always jumped out to me, and I don't know, like how much you remember song titles. So there was a song called Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, that one had a very kind of funky groove to it. I was like, that that feels like something that would have been more of a Kyle thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that one actually, uh, it does stick out to me because I remember recording that song and, um, and when I heard the, the EP, I went, I didn't play these bass tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's not me. <laughs> yeah. It's... It doesn't even sound like my bass tone, you know, like it, it's completely... It just completely wiped me off the off the page. Huh. Um, but yeah, that, yeah, that that type of uh, thing, you know, that just really groovy, and mm. uh, you know, and, and this is like pre new metal. Yeah, like th- that was you had like Corn and Limp Biscuit, but they were still like not. It, yeah, there, they weren't there, blowing up. There yeah. wasn't a million imitators yet. Right. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, um, yeah, so I was like, you know, why don't you take metal and add in these elements of, like, 70s light rock? Sure. And, and make it interesting and, and melodic and fun and, and, or, or sentimental or whatever, you know? Yeah. Instead of just like, you know, like <laughs> I mean, even Pantera has those elements, you know. Yeah. And they're like one of the heaviest bands I've ever heard in my life, you know. And and but they've still got the, this like lovely, beautiful melodic essence to them. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to impart. You know, as as the bass player, because being a bass player, you get to kind of control the 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 music. Yeah. You know what I mean? You 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 get to control what's going on in the band. Yeah. The rest of the band can be doing whatever the hell they want, but the bass player is the one who's going. This is where we're going as an entity. Yeah. You know, it, the- and and you can do it smoothly you can do it in an ugly way you can do it horribly you can do it just just the same way that the guitar player is doing it if you want yeah but you have the control Mm -hmm. and um and so i was i was trying to impart these you know melodies that would be mimicked or or enhance the the uh, the vocal, you know. That's mm-hmm. really what I was trying to do, and and you know, and then I hear the damn 
coaching. <laughs> and, and I'm like, this is basically the exact same thing as the guitar part, and I definitely did not do that. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that's why I was like, yeah, no, that's definitely not me playing. And so, and I know why, because, you know. Yeah, there, there's always been like... It, a lot of people talk about like the demo songs that didn't make the album. Sometimes people like them better than the stuff that did, and it's like I just listen to that stuff. It's like it definitely feels like it's a lot more all over the map. And on the one hand, for the sake of making an album, having something that's more cohesive, I I understand that. But like it was, it felt less ambitious to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, uh, if I can offer you one bit of advice on your quest here <laughs> sure talk to Mike Shinoda and tell him that you want to hear the actual tracks from that EP okay. the actual bass tracks because that will give you uh, a little more insight into sure. uh, where we were as a band at that point yeah because I was part of the band at that point. I was I was there, you know. Mm-hmm. This is for you being fired. Um, I, I, that's what I would suggest. Because it, it, it and it, you know, it, I'm pretty sure he'll he'll deny any sort of culpability in that. <laughs> and <you know. laughs> yeah. but but if you can talk to him and and he'll actually play those tracks for you, yeah, you'll yeah. understand that. You know, I was trying to make that band considerably more melodic than they ever were yeah yeah they and that's um it, really what it boils down to i i feel like with the the stuff on the box set too like i you saying that they never contacted you about could have been that's actually completely opposite of what mike said because he um he, he brought it up he's been doing his twitch streaming and stuff and he brought it up with like yeah we hadn't talked to kyle in so long I, we weren't sure if like we'd be allowed to use the song but I guess he just assumed that his management people contacted you, and I guess nobody did. <laughs> <laughs> Which no, I, I went and got married. <laughs> I went to Las Vegas and got married, and went on a honeymoon for two weeks. That was why I didn't contact any one of them. Okay. And as soon as I got back into town, I, I started making phone calls to all of them. Really? That's the real story, yes. Okay. So have you have you been in touch with them since then, like at all? Or? No. Okay. No. None of them. And it, and it really made me angry that, that Chester killed himself because I was like, I, it, you know, I really liked him. How could you? How can anybody not like that guy? Is kind of all, how I always felt about him. Yeah, no, he. I mean, it, 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 he was just. Um, yeah, he he was an arrogant bastard. But <laughs> so am I. So sure, that's why we got along well together. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I, I. I I never have a, an ill word to speak about Chester. He was he was a wonderful man. Yeah. So like early on, I, I always hear that like he didn't really get along with the rest of the band early on. I feel like he did later, uh, like after he had some time. But he, there's a lot of stuff in Jeff's book about him feeling like an outsider because he was the new guy. Which I mean, that I can see that, <laughs> but. Yeah, no, uh, like I said, I, I, I have no idea because by that point, I was fired. I was sure. I was done. I, was, I wasn't in the band anymore. But right. I always got along with Chester. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess just like to wrap it up, just like to kind of promote whatever you want us to promote as far as what, what have you been working on nowadays? Like, are, are you still playing music? Are you. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
You got any, like... Come on, man. Well, I, I, I was going to say, I know you're still playing music because you can never take that out of somebody, but do you, are you, like, in any bands, any, like, stuff that's, you know, online that we can check out? Or? Um, no, nothing nothing going on online. Um, right now we're really just rehearsing. Okay. Um, we got two separate uh, projects happening, um, and uh, one of them is called Bad Cannon. Um, which is just like full on metal. Okay. Cannon, and, uh, cannon with two ends or one end? Uh, two ends. Okay. Like, you know, with the balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cannon. Balls. Not like, not like the, uh, you know, the history of, right. uh, you know, the, 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 uh, Literacy. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, and then the other one is called the live ribbon. The li- so, live ribbon. No, the live ribbon. Oh, like library men. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which is basically a cover band, but um, okay. But the most ridiculous covers you could think of. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and, and we've all adopted uh, some brand of British accent. <laughs> I was going to say, I, when you first picked up the phone, I almost heard a little bit of a British accent. I was like, I don't think he's British. No, I'm not, but you, I can you, do you, a damn good model. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you've been practicing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, a little bit. I, I, a little bit I have been. <laughs> but it, cool. it just sort of comes out, you know. Yeah. Like especially with the libram. Right. Right. Yeah. I was like the way you pronounce it. I was like, wait a second. Oh, that's got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's that's exactly the way that it should be because um, yeah, Frank is, is, has this like uh, uh, um, what's his face uh, who's married to. Uh, oh shit Elizabeth um, oh my god my brain is farting right now um, <laughs> I can't think of, uh, of his name but he's got this like slow drawl type of, a, a, sure. of an English accent and then Tony's got this other you know thing that's going on like just you know and but mine is totally my okay nice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's like we're all from different parts of England except that we've none of us have ever been there <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's really what it boils down to um, uh, yeah so it, it, it's and it's just cover song you know sure it's it, 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 canon is, is like this you know heavy metal uh, thing going on but but it's all originals and then there's the live room <laughs> because we just we're we pay attention to music we've been paying attention to music for hundreds of years sure. <laughs> between all of us yeah. you know? <laughs> literally over a hundred years of just listening to music right so you know that's cool. really what that is about and so you know yeah yeah well good and, and as soon as we can break out and do some music in front of people thank you COVID-19 right uh uh, we'll be we'll be packing places in and, yeah. and you know my, my my girlfriend who I've been with now for for like five months something like that sure um she's like I never heard you play bass and I'm like you've heard me play bass and she's like no I've never heard you really play the bass and I'm like Okay, let me play you some of the songs that I wrote. Okay. 
And so I I played some of the stuff, some of the Waffle stuff, because mm. Waffle is my, you know, the band that I really adore and treasure, and, and you know, it was my baby. It was it was my thing. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "Holy crap, man!" <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say too, like it's good to have like some other references of stuff you're playing in because the only band that I ever really remember seeing like after you were in Hybrid Theory was Nosedive. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know that was like probably, probably by like 2003 or four that was done. So that's been 15 years or so since I've <laughs> heard of anything yeah. that you were doing. Yeah. No, Waffle was was the band that. Uh, that was my that was okay. that was uh, you know I basically wrote all of the songs I you know I did all the arrangements I you know and, and it was just it, same thing it was it was a three piece band and um, yeah it was it, it was really like just crazy like you know because we. We formed in in ninety four, I think. Okay, so that was before you were with the Lincoln Park oh, yeah. guys. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well before that, yeah. And um, yeah, and it was it was, you know, I, shit. I was twenty two at the time. <laughs> twenty one, twenty two, somewhere in there. And uh, Mr. Poopy Pants. Our drummer was like, I think he was twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I didn't name him Mr. Booby Pit. That was from another band that we were in later, but but he's still Mr. Booby Pit now. And uh, yeah, and the Gimp. Um, well, the Gimp got his name after uh, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. So. <laughs> I was gonna ask. <laughs> so. Um, but we uh yeah, no no we we wrote these songs that were um we were all influenced by uh Primus, Mr. Bungle, Tool, uh Pantera, Boingo Boingo, um and and, and I mean I, there's the list goes on but but those are probably the top five and so sure. we wrote these songs that are that were just like completely ridiculous you know mm-hmm. what do you think of the new Mr. Bungle stuff um if you've heard it I don't know I have heard it okay I have heard it and I like it <laughs> I do like it yeah I, I dig pretty much anything Mike Patton's mm-hmm. done He's... Yeah, they, well, you know, the tomahawk stuff, and, and you know, it, it it feels a little forced. Sure, that's just me saying that. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying it. That's it. <laughs> but um, but no, my, uh, my my girlfriend had never heard Mr. Bongo. Oh, okay. And, and so I played her. Uh, what did I play her? Uh, my ass is on fire. Um, <laughs> I played her uh, retro vertigo, and and she was like, "Holy shit!" And I was like, <laughs> I know, "Right?" <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's so amazingly good. Yeah. Like it's and and so musical. And and this is this goes back to where I was. With Lincoln Park, mm-hmm. the, that know, kind I mean, of played into like your uh, to, to shit like that, yeah, and and that came and through in your bass like, lines. No, no, we we need to be more like Bon Jovi. And <laughs> I was like, that's such a it's weird. Not that I don't like Bon Jovi. It's just yeah. come on, <laughs> add a little something to it. <laughs> that's you know? a, so. That's really what it boiled yeah. down to. Hearing them say we should be like Bon Jovi is such a weird left field reference for like what you think Lincoln Park is. <laughs> but, 
Yeah, but but that's exactly what they were going for. Yeah. You know, that's or at least that's what the record label was going for. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't know because I was out of the band by that point. Sure. You know, when I was in the band, I was I was like pushing toward Primus or or Mr. Bungle, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and, and then all of a sudden this record comes out. And it sounds like a Bon Jovi record. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's really what you were after? Really? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, so, so there you go. Yeah, and so you have yeah. a, it, now you have it's, a sound bite. Yeah, that's, that's a lot to go on. <laughs> I'm going to, um, I mean, I'll transcribe all this from the audio and probably. I'll have to edit a little bit down, but like, I'll, um, I'm not gonna like change anything you said. I'm not gonna be a dick like that. <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a journalist. I'm just a guy. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're a journalist now. Well, that's what. Oh no! I, I just accidentally became in, a journalist. In 2020. It, it's it, yeah. You're you you are technically a journalist. You're, oh crap. <laughs> Yeah, so get used to it there, sweetness. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll text it to you when we get it all done and posted. Yeah, no, I look I look forward to seeing it, and, right. and I thank you for for reaching out to me because um, you know, like I said, I don't I don't have any ill will for those bastards, but you know, <laughs> uh, it, it it's nice to be able to tell my side of the story you know sure awesome well yeah it's, it's been great talking to you man yeah likewise yeah you I, have a great evening i will talk to you later cool you too man <laughs> all right bye, bye.